Alrighty tidy. So the question is, how do I draw a human from the side view? This is a very good question. So first off, we're going to start off with the stick figure. Why? Because we need to define what our pose is going to be. So let's say we just want a person standing straight up and having their hands in their pockets, right? This is the, the other hand. So now that we know we want this pose, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start and draw out the details. So for the head, let's just draw a circle first, give it a neck, and give it a chest. Now, when we were drawing the front, we drew the shoulders before we drew the chest. So where are the shoulders on the side view? Well, it's right here. It's right here. And so you know the shoulder blades that happen when you draw in the front view? Yeah, they are right here. Now I'm drawing in a simplistic style, so you don't necessarily need the shoulder blades for this case. But let's continue. Let's go to the waist, and then the hip. Remember the two trapezoids? It's pretty much the same, only this time we have the butt butt in the back. And it's not as curvy up front. And then the legs. Here is the knees. And here is the lower legs. And then we have the feet. And here is the leg on the other side. Now, at this point, you can kind of see that the lines are not following the original stick figure, but it's all right. As long as your original stick figure pose helps you understand what you are drawing, then you don't necessarily have to follow the stick figure. Here's the knee. You could just draw a line and make sure that the leg goes downward like that. And then let's make these lines lighter so that we can see the lines for the arms. So the next step would be drawing the arms and what we wanted was them putting their hands in their pockets. So that would be starting from this because this is the shoulders right here. And the pockets are going to be around over here. Now, I'm pretty sure we all have common sense and we won't make elbows as long as this. Because that's some creepypasta. I'm going to trust everyone to know that it's generally this length. Okay? Just have to make sure that the thickness of the arms is correct. And we have a basic pose. Obviously, the rest is just adding the t-shirt. Here's the thing you have to note. The front of the collar is always lower than the back of the collar. There are shirts that have it lower in the back, but those are usually not the default, especially for t-shirts. And the t-shirt is what we're trying to draw here. So just like last time, adding a few folds here. Why? Because the t-shirt is not going to go straight. If it goes straight, it's going to clip with the hand over here. So what's happening is it's going to go upward. It is pushed upward, and that's why there's a little bit of folds here. Maybe add a little bit of lines to show the folds up here as well. And maybe, and maybe a little bit like this. And then the pants. Now, I personally like to add a few bit bumps of folds here. Why? Because when we bend, right, there are folds here with the fabric. And when we are straight, the, the folds are still a little bit there. So I'm just adding just a little bit, not as intense as when we bend, but it's still there a little bit. So I'm, I'm adding these here, and then downward. I'm going to do the same for this one, but since we can't really see the back part of the pants, we don't need to care about the bends. Well, maybe a little bit, just a little bit. Just like two strokes there. And then the feet. 
Now, one thing to note here about the feet is this is how I draw the feet, especially from the side. After the leg, after it goes down, it is made of a trapezoid, a triangle, and the things between. And so when you lift it up like this, where is the trapezoid? It's basically right here. But the triangle is still touching the ground, so that means it is still remaining in the same position as this one. But there's a curve, and if I were to go into detail, there's technically another triangle hidden there, and this one's a trapezoid, because these are the toes. So imagine if I draw it at an angle, then I would be drawing, you see, one ball here, another ball here. This is the middle line. So it goes down. Here are the toes. Anyways, this is just a simplified version. So now that we understand the simplified version, we can do this to our shoes. And then we move on to the face. So there are two ways to draw the face, at least for me. The first one is to always start with a flat surface and then define where the jaw is going to be. And I always use the middle of the neck to define where the jaw is going to end, go upward. How much it goes upward depending on where this circle is. It's the shape of your head, which is right here. And then we need to find where the eye is. It is right here for our character, which means that the ears are over here. And then the nose starts from here. Here's the mouth. We're not going to go into lips for now. Here are the brows, and that means there's a little bump here. And then just fill in the rest. Now, there are times when your sphere is not exactly correct when it comes to the head shape. And feel free to adjust, resize, you know. It's perfectly fine. You don't have to get things right on the first try. It's perfectly fine. The second way to draw the head, and I'm just going to copy paste this over here for a quick demonstration. We're still going to start with the flat front of the face, but this time the nose goes out like this and it just goes straight down to the jaw. We move the mouth forward and not have the bump on the brow that expressive. That is the second way to draw the head, and I know that a lot of anime art styles use that. But yeah, that is generally how you draw a side view. By the way, glasses look like this on the side. I hope the tutorial was easy enough. Totally ask questions if something was unclear or if you want to know more, and I'll see you the next time.